From the guy who brought you Seven and the movie about my ex-girlfriend comes a heartwarming tale of traveling around the world and killing people. David Fincher's The Killer, based off the French graphic novel of the same name, is a window into the dark world of professional hitmen. So basically like my time playing this video game. In this video, we'll be taking a deep dive into the movie, its ending, and some of its biggest questions. So make sure to like and subscribe, let's get into it. The film is split into six chapters, each one documenting a kill in the killer's journey. There's the sexy lover he inadvertently kills in France, the cab driver in the Dominican, the lawyer and Dolores in New Orleans, the brute, Tilda Swinton's the expert, and the metaphorical death of his hitman past. The story of the killer centers around a hit gone wrong. Our protagonist, known simply as the killer, although he's been given a dozen fake aliases throughout the film, misses his target. This was a hit financed by multi-billionaire Claiborne, a man we'll come to know as the client, who hires Hodges the lawyer. The lawyer runs a hitman side hustle from his law offices in New Orleans in which he contracts out hitmen to get the job done. But in this case, the job goes to shit. As a sort of insurance that none of this comes to bite the client, in the ass, the lawyer offers the client to quote, scrub the trail. Now the client admits he wasn't sure what was meant by this and ensures the killer it was nothing personal. And surprisingly, the killer doesn't kill. We spend the entire movie building up to this moment and he lets the man go. But to understand why he made this decision, we must first understand who the killer is as a person. For roughly the first 20 minutes of the movie, the only dialogue we hear is an inner monologue from the killer himself. He is cold, both literally and figuratively, as he sits next to a busted heater. He is methodical, practicing yoga and preparing his weapon, and has an almost existential outlook on life. One is born, lives their life, and eventually, one dies. No doubt all of this is a defense mechanism to protect him from the fact he's committing brutal crimes. It's ironic that he's set up shop in a rundown WeWork office, a company that just filed for bankruptcy. It's a metaphor for his upcoming failure and the end of his work. Contrast this cold, depressing, and dreary setting to the film's ending, where it's somewhere warm, bright, with a positive outlook on the future with his girlfriend. But this change doesn't happen at once. It's something that chips away at him throughout his journey, a journey that starts with the botched hit in France. We'll hear him say this quote, of which he lives his life by. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. It's from the Book of Law, the central sacred text of Thelema, a religious movement founded in the 1900s by famous English occultist Alastair Crowley. It basically means that one should seek out and follow their own true path, and this true path for the killer is one that sees him change from someone who shies away from empathy Forbid empathy. Empathy is weakness to one who embraces it. I also found it pretty fun that he talks about the world being a survival of the fittest while eating McDonald's. Now the killer is deeply methodical, tracking his heart rate, preparing for the job, and his inner monologue acting as a sort of guide on how to kill without getting emotional or taking sides. I serve no god or country. I'm not here to take sides. It's not my place to formulate any opinion. Fight only the battle you're paid to fight. Music becomes his distraction, with a playlist comprised of the Smiths, a band which, like the killer, has many cynical takes, but at the end of the day will say things like, I am The first big crack in the killer's worldview is when he travels to his home in the Dominican Republic to find that his girlfriend, Magdala, has been beaten to the brink of death by two hitmen, a punishment for his botched job in Paris. It's here we see that the killer does have empathy, a trait he saw as a weakness because of its vulnerability, and his love for her has definitely made him vulnerable. We'll start to see him breaking many of his rules and methods he espoused in the first 20 minutes. For example, fight over. Only the battle you're paid to fight. His whole revenge mission is paid by no one, fueled rather by his need to protect those he loves than money. Or what about forbid empathy? Empathy is weakness. After Dolores pleads, But promise me you won't leave things looking the wrong way. So he kills her, making it look like she fell down the stairs and broke her neck instead of a hit on a woman who helped run a hit business. He also uses empathy while sparing the client. And that might be the biggest question of all. 
why did the killer spare the client? He's gone through so many obstacles to get to him just to leave. Perhaps it's because the client knew nothing of Magdala. Remember that this whole journey started because of what was done to this girl. The killer will say, And you have no idea why I might be here? If we're to believe the client, he basically knew nothing and paid $150,000 to just clean up this mess. Now, if the client did know what was done to Magdala or knew anything about her, I think we'd be dealing with a different story. It's also important to note that the killer does promise to come back and give the client an excruciating death if he comes after him. <laughs> what a sweetheart. The killer's decision to spare the client could also be impacted by the story the expert tells him a few days prior. It's a perverted tale of a hunter who goes into the woods to kill a bear, but when the hunter fails, he is offered the choice of being killed or being sodomized. He chooses sodomy and returns to the woods again and again, each time failing and each time choosing sodomy. The point being that it wasn't the hunt that was driving the hunter, but something else. You're not really out here for the hunting, are you? By the killer choosing to spare the client, he has chosen not to go on the hunt. He is doing the opposite of what the hunter would have done by never firing a shot in the first place. There's also the question of what Fincher and writer Andrew Walker are saying about the world we live in. The end leaves us with two multi-millionaires who have committed terrible crimes, both getting away with it. We'll see the killer take wire funds to a Caribbean bank account with over $8 million in it. It's an account made out to George Jefferson, one of his many aliases. In fact, almost all of his aliases are named after characters from various American sitcoms. George Jefferson and Archibald Bunker from All in the Family, Sam Malone from Cheers, Lou Grant from Lou Grant, Reuben Kincaid from The Partridge Family, and Oscar Madison and Felix Unger from The Odd Couple, just to name a few. At the beginning of the film, the killer states that The few have always exploited the many. And he counts himself among those few. But at the end of the film, he has put his life behind to become one of the many. Well, maybe you're not one of the few. Maybe you're just like me, one of the many. He has decided to put his past life behind him and live a life of peace. We'll see him next to his girlfriend, the one he promised he'd protect. And I'm sure quitting this life of crime is a part of that promise. I swear to you. Nothing like this will ever be allowed to happen again. But you'll notice at the very end there's this twitch in his eye, a very conscious choice by Fassbender here. Almost as if to say his character is feeling uneasy, or that deep down he knows he can't leave the hunt forever. It's in his blood. The film ends with a changed killer, a man who claimed he was one of the few, now one of the many. From one who shunned empathy to one whose empathy guided him on his path. But does that excuse all the terrible things he's done in the past. Not at all. It does show us the capacity for someone to change, and if there's one takeaway from this film, perhaps it's what Fincher said himself. Quote, My hope is that someone will see this film and get very nervous about the person behind them in line at Home Depot. Need any help getting rid of that body? <laughs> But now I turn it over to you. What did you think of The Killer? I want to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. And for more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.